Yo, Black Lives Matter, right? I'm just looking for a job. Jobs are for capitalist slaves. It's with the blue hair from Tick. I don't answer the patriarchy. Why do you hate men so much? Because like all men are sexist pigs. I deserve to die! Next! What do you love the most? Beer, beef, and Jesus. Next! Why are most blacks so immoral? I know you didn't just say that. Where are you going? Hey! Why do you still live with your parents? No platform for fascists! No platform for fascists! No platform for yes. fascists! If you're so proud of Mexico, then why are you still here? This is ridiculous. There's gotta be a better way to find gas. If you strongly disagree with me, and you are a good debater, and if you live in the LA area and would like to be on The Fall Estate, go to thefallestate.tv. Come join us on The Fall Estate! Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. There is a group of people called incels, and they are getting a lot of press these days. I have with me Derek. He's a 21-year-old, lives in Los Angeles. And so you are an incel. Yeah, that's right. And have you always been an incel? Um, I wouldn't say that I've always been an incel, but I would say that like, um, most of my adult life, I've probably been an incel. So like probably like from 18, 19, 20. 18, you became an incel? Well, um, what happened is when I turned 18, uh, or like, well, before I was 18, I, I was a, uh, you know, a young teenager. And um, I was uh, very interested in uh, um, finding a relationship with a, a woman, right? I wanted a girlfriend. And this, this was when I was more, um, like I suppose I wasn't as 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 bright as I as I, or well read as I am now. I suppose, and uh, I kind of just like assumed that it, it was it was very easy to get a, a girlfriend. It was just like oh, you could just approach a girl and you know uh, be nice and talk and and uh, just be friendly and and it, it would all just work out. Um, but uh, as I got uh, older and I became more aware of uh, uh, myself. I realized that you know I had some, uh, I did have some flaws, but there were also flaws around me that were preventing me from, uh, or uh, like situations that were preventing me from getting a girlfriend, uh, which eventually down the line, I learned of the term incel, and then that's when uh, <laughs> I guess I associated with it a little bit. Yeah. And so what were your flaws that prevented you from getting a girlfriend? Um, have you ever had a girlfriend? <laughs> this is, like, there's gonna be some people who are gonna call me uh, a fake cell. <laughs> like, there's there because uh, in the in the forum uh, or in like the groups, there are certain terms, right? And one right. of the terms is fake cell. So they're gonna say that because I had a girlfriend one time or twice, uh, that I'm a fake cell. But I have I haven't had any uh, sexual contact with any mm -hmm. of them. So, like, the whole point about being an incel is that you are an involuntary celibate, right? Which means that you are a celibate, but you don't want to be a celibate. Uh, so the definition of an incel is what? It's um, involuntary. involuntary celibacy, right? Uh -huh. And um, Meaning that you don't want to be celibate. Yeah, you don't want to be celibate. Okay. Um, now there is a, uh, there's also like voluntary celibates, which are people who, who they want to be celibate and they can be celibate, but they don't like, uh, they're, they're celibate voluntarily, meaning that if they wanted to, they could go out and have a relationship with a woman, but they choose to for like moral reasons, right? And, um, and so what was it about you that made you an incel? The reason that uh, I believe that I'm an incel is because mostly because of where I live. Um, I am what they call a, a location cell, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> A location cell is, <laughs> is someone who uh, is generally an incel because of the local uh, sexual market around where they live. 
And uh, this could be for various different reasons. Like f we, uh, we're both in LA, right? Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> women in LA, they're very, um, I suppose, more shallow and, and hypergamous and, and they don't like to settle down. They have a lot of uh, problems uh, in their life. So there tends to be more of a problem for a lot of mostly young white men and there's also a lot of young Asian men who have a lot of problems as well and some Indian men as well um, who have problems in areas like here. Like I, I'm pretty confident in the fact that, uh, like I would say that the biggest reasons why I'm in so here specifically. In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, or in, maybe even in like Southern California, let's so say. So when you say the area you live in, you don't necessarily mean your neighborhood. No, I don't mean, mean your neighborhood. You mean like the city or I mean city like the city live oh, okay. or the state. Sometimes it can be, even be a country, but right. uh, okay. yeah. I believe that uh, like here, the reason why I'm an incel here. In LA. In LA or in California or you know, Southern California. I, I, I have some mixed data on Northern California. Northern California might actually be nice, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Okay. But um, the reason why I think I am an incel here is primarily for two reasons. And it's probably, well actually three reasons. It's because um, primarily, Probably because I'm uh, a little chubby, right? You know, it's also because probably because I'm a little short as well. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm, uh, I'm five five, right. which is uh, you know not that uh, sought after in in, in some pl in like uh, uh, certain relationships. Right. Uh, and another reason as well is that uh, I don't have a, a job, even though I I really want a job. I you know I've sought out a job, but it's actually uh, really hard to get a job in, you know, here. Why don't you have a job at 21? Um, so when I was, um, like when I turned 18, I did a lot of uh, uh, job seeking, right? And uh, for whatever reason, uh, like from 18, 19, 20, 21, and uh, I did stay around my local area, I applied to a bunch of different places, local places, uh, local businesses, my friend's business. Um, now, the, now, my friend actually wants me to work with him, but the problem is it's a distance thing. So I can't really, like, he's really far away, so I can't work with him. Um, but all the local businesses, they didn't, uh, they didn't hire me, right? And it, it was for various reasons, but I don't think a lot of the reasons were that justified. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not trying to, to, to <laughs> diss them completely, but, but I, uh, I did see, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be conspiratorial or anything, but, but w around my area, I noticed that people who um, got hired over me, they tended to be um, like women or <laughs> minorities, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, I, didn't, I didn't really see that many young white men getting hired, or I saw yeah. a lot of young white men having a lot of problems getting jobs. And I don't know if that's, if it's, true. I don't know if it's affirmative action or if it's um, just some sort of like localized system where they don't want to hire uh, white men. So that's why I've had a lot of problems getting a job because I'd love to make money and and uh, and move out of here like that because I think here is you know the biggest problem. But, right. Yeah. Why don't you go near where your friend live and get a job with him and then just get an apartment there or something? Right. Um, <laughs> well, that's um, a little bit more complicated. Uh, like, I do need to get a driver's license, right? And I, I don't have a driver's license uh, yet. In cell without a driver's license? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, so not only can you not get a woman, you can't even get a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah. Um, so is there like a YouTube channel for in cells who can't get a driver's license? <laughs> no, no. No. No, I'm messing with you. It's just... Uh, uh, I guess I just, I've been more preoccupied. I've been trying to find a job in my local area because yeah. it's just more convenient, you know. You live with your parents? Yeah, at the moment, yeah. And so you became an incel at 18. Uh, were you overweight at 18? Yeah, I was, I was a lot more, I, I used to be a lot bigger, right? I used to be oh, like yeah? really big, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm still chubby now, as you can probably tell, but I used to have like a, a really big double chin and uh, you know I couldn't I couldn't look down and s see myself and wow. uh, and I couldn't like reach down and touch my feet without feeling really tired really? so yeah so I, I did uh, now the, the reason why I got fat by the way because you know because a lot of people who get fat they it is usually their fault 
right? Uh, it's completely their fault and they shouldn't be eating as much as they should or whatever. It's, it's not a really good coping mechanism. The, I got fat when I was a child and I grew up in that, uh, in that way. So by the time I was uh, more cognitively aware of my, of my, you know, my problem, I had to deal with it on my own. You know, I had to like, I had to figure out that, oh, okay, well, since I'm unhealthy and uh, I'm uh, overweight and this is probably going to affect my life in more than just uh, relationships, it's going to affect my life in, you know, health wise, yeah. I decided that I wanted to, to work out. So I've been working out basically every day for several months. Good, I don't man. know how many months it's That's been. Great. What caused you to become fat as a child? <laughs> well, um, I don't want to put like too much blame on anyone, but I would say, I suppose there wasn't enough guidance or encouragement in my life, maybe from um, my mother, uh, who uh, didn't really teach me how to like, uh, well, she didn't really encourage me to eat healthy foods yeah. or not to eat as much. Or, or to be as active outside as, as I could have been. Yeah. Uh, so that, that probably is the major factor. But I mean, I don't, I don't like- Is your mother fat? No, 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 she's skinny, yeah. She's skinny? Yeah, she's skinny. And, uh, were you raised by your father too? Was he there? Not my biological father, I have a stepfather. Oh, so your biological <laughs> father was there. Yeah. And your stepfather allowed your mother to just feed you and not make you get out and do things? Um. <sighs> I mean, when you put it like that, it sounds really bad, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess, I guess he so. Did. And how do you feel about your stepfather not protecting you from your mother? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't think she was trying to like harm me. I just don't think she was being as, as um, diligent as she could have been. And you why know? not? Um, because she's skinny, she took care of herself, right? Right, but I think she I think, took yoga and, <laughs> and, and and all those different classes and left you at home peeking out. <laughs> Why didn't she treat you the way she treated herself? Well, yeah, but but she didn't. Um, I think she just wanted to make me happy. Like she just wanted to like because I think when I was uh, younger, I, I liked food a lot, right? So. Um, she just wanted to make me happy, and 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 I noticed the problem is uh, she was a single mother, right? And uh, for a long time. Um, so your father and mother were never married. No. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And so you think that because of that, she just wanted to keep you happy by feeding you? Well, yeah. Well, because you know, like a lot of single mothers, they they don't have they didn't have a lot of guidance in their right. in their childhood, right? They didn't have yeah. a lot of guidance in their life. Like my mother, um, I know that uh, her father was very distant to her, which is, as you'd expect, a, a bad thing. And her mother was very angry and, and violent to her as well, you know, abusive. So um, I assume that what her uh, coping mechanism with dealing with her uh, bad problems in her life was to be more lenient and, and maybe too lenient yeah. and nice to me yeah. when I was a child. Um, and especially when I had her being really nice to me and, and she was she's a very loving person, but the problem is, she was too nice. You know, right. she wasn't. She wasn't guiding enough, um, and I didn't have a uh, like a father figure. So that probably did cause, you know, that probably did lead to the whole me getting fat as a child thing. Yeah. Do you uh, know who your father is? Um, I don't know his. I don't know his name, but I know. I know like. Uh, I'm pretty aware of who he is. Yeah. Yeah. You're aware of who he is, but you don't know his name. No. So your mother just said, look, that man is your dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, You're I like, oh, that's interesting. And you didn't bother to ask his name? No, I, I, I did ask his name and she did tell, tell me, but you know, man, I, I forgot his name, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> and so do you live right down the street from him? No, 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 no. Where does he live? Somewhere in California. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Could you find him if you wanted to? I probably could, yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, one day, yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. How do you feel about him? From what I've heard um, from my mother, uh, she doesn't put like too much blame on him or anything, right? Like she's, she's pretty aware of like um, the situation, but he did, uh, like he was, uh, I guess like a mama's boy, right? So he, he, he uh, his mother did not like my mother. So, um, 
as my mom had, uh, had me with him, uh, over time, I guess, uh, the mother kept encouraging more distance, and he decided that he didn't want to wow. be in the relationship. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about him? Um, I just, I don't really, I don't really feel much. I mean, I'd like to get his side of the story. I, I like to see like what he has to say and like maybe what, what happened from his perspective. Do you long for him? Do I like long for him? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I, I long for a, a father, so I guess maybe, but I'm not sure if I'm, I, 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 I long for him. But that's the only one you can long for is <laughs> your own father. You can't long yeah. for another father. Yeah. So you should make an attempt to go see him so you can work that out. Yeah. And how did you feel about your mother? Uh, did you resent her at all for letting you grow up fat and feeding you um, and not really I mean, treating when, you the right way? When I was uh, uh, maybe like a year or two ago, I, I did become very uh, hateful and, and, and dark and, and, and uh, nihilistic. And at that point, I did put a lot of blame on her. Well, she is to blame. I mean, I know, I know she is to blame. She's 100% to blame. But from ignorance, right? right like she's right. and because of the the, the well, problems we, of her, of her, her past life. as well, yeah. yeah. But but yeah, so yes, yeah, she is to blame. But I, I I you know I forgive her for for. So the you've been watching my YouTube channel. I have, yeah. Oh, so did she go and forgive her? I mean, I I actually forgave her before I even found yeah. you. Yeah, oh, you I, I, I discovered that on my own that if you forgive someone, it's just and better. You went to her and forgave her. Yeah, I forgave her. Yeah. And, and you told her. Yeah. You what did you say to her? Um, I. It was, this was after like months of me just talk, like it was, this was like at the peak of when I was really um, hopeless, you know, I was very dark and hopeless and angry and, and. What does darkness and hopeless feel like? Hopelessness feel like? <laughs> feels awful. Like, I mean, it just feels like you're, it feels like you're in pain uh, on the inside, but uh, it's not like, I mean, it feels like physical pain, but it's not actually physical pain, right. you know? Yeah, sure. So. Did you try to take your own life? No, but I did think about it. You thought about it? I thought it? about it like quite a few times. But, if, but what prevented you from doing it? Um, I, I guess I coped in certain ways. Like I played video games, for example, or, oh. or, or, I, or I did a lot of research into, into political stuff or, or uh, like, since I don't have a job, it's given me a lot of free time, <laughs> right? So I've, I've done a lot of research to try and be as educated and well-read on my own, even though I'm not in school or um, have a job. So I've done a lot of research into like um, biology, psychology. Um, I did. I read the the Bible. I read the the, the Talmud, which is the the Jewish book, the Quran as well. I, and I argued a lot on the internet to, to try and like strengthen my be beliefs and what I thought was true. So I would uh, always try and look for the truth, right? Because I thought, because at the time, um, I used to be like a long, not, I mean, not like a long time ago, but it feels like a long time, but I used to be like an atheist, right? I used oh, okay. to be, uh, um, I used to be very dark and nihilistic and I had like n uh, not that many, I mean, I had moral beliefs, but I didn't, I had no foundation for my moral beliefs, right. you know? And... Um, so you live with your mother right now? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. You live with your stepfather too? Yeah. Amazing. Is that hard on you? I mean, oh. <laughs> uh, you're living with the people you hate. No, I don't hate them. Oh, you forgave them. Yeah. And so what is it like being 21 and living with them? It's just normal, I guess. Oh, okay. It's just my life. And so you went to your mother and said what to her? Well, so after, you know, that whole thing, I, I went to her and I told her, you know, um, like when I became more understanding of things, after I became more well researched into a lot of topics, right. I did understand it wasn't her fault. You know, like this was even before I found any of your YouTube videos right. or anything. I actually found a lot of this stuff out on my own. It yeah. was a very hard process, very long process, took a long time. But I found out that, you know, the best thing to do is, is that you got to realize that, uh, yeah, was it her fault? Yes, but it was her fault indirectly. And I do forgive her. And I, I told her that, you know, I, you know, I forgive you for everything that you did, and I know it's not your fault. And um, but it was her fault. I mean, I mean, you know what I mean. It wasn't her <laughs> fault. Uh, it was her fault indirectly from her parents. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. And and it, their parents caused their problems as Are well. Are you an only child? Yes, I am. And so, what did she say when you told her that? Um, 
she was happy because because I think she did kind of develop a sense of she's very uh, aware, you know. So she, you know, I noticed that a lot of a lot of mothers they're not very aware even of their own children, right? They're right. not they can't even communicate that well with their own child. She could communicate very well. So I think she did start to understand that it was her fault, but um, she couldn't have, like she didn't know, she didn't know any better, and she, but she, she understood that, and she was sorry to me as well, right. and I was sorry to her. Did you feel better? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I felt better, yeah. And how about your stepfather, you forgave him too? Um, I mean, we don't, we don't really talk that much about that kind of stuff. I mean, he's, he's, uh, um, he's, <laughs> he's a leftist. Oh, your stepfather? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, now, he's not a bad guy at all. Like, I mean, right. well, you know, I mean, he's not a bad guy as in, like, morally he's not a bad guy. But um, he's very adamant about his beliefs about a lot of things. So it's really hard for us to talk about, like, let's say just certain things in general because uh, he might get angry about it. And, uh, and uh, Do you feel close to him? <laughs> not not as close as I could be, I guess. No, not really. I guess. And why not? Um, because I guess through a lot of the, the the fighting and like forcing myself to distance him from him because of the uh, the anger and the conflicts, um, mostly from him because I'm not actually that angry. He's he's the one who's pretty angry. Right. Um, is that we can't really communicate that well about everything. I have to be. I, I mean, I I don't like have to be quiet, but I feel like it's better if I don't talk to him about a lot of things because then it, a lot of conflict won't brew out, you know. Does he call you names when you're arguing? No. He I mean, well, oh, actually, he has called me names, yeah, but, yeah. yeah in like the past, what, for example? Like, when I was younger, he did call me, like, like a fat F word, right? Uh, this was, the, like, the, during the, um, the presidential election, right? During one of the debates. The Great White Hope? <laughs> yeah, the Great White Hope. <laughs> uh, during the, uh, during the debate for, I think it was, it was either the first or the second. I think it was the first debate. Was the first debate in October? Do you remember? I don't remember, but what, let's say it was. You could tell that Donald Trump was winning the debate, yes. right? You could totally tell that he was winning the debate. And, and I supported Donald Trump. Right on. Uh, You're an alpha male then, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, what happened is during the election, I, he made some comments to Hillary during the, the debate. And I was kind of like, I was like, oh, this is looking good for Donald Trump. I, I'm, you know, I became, I was... Uh, more hopeful about him, you know, right. I thought he was doing well. And my dad, you know, he got very angry and violent during the debate because I guess he could kind of tell <laughs> that something was going wrong, you know, like Hillary was losing the debate. And um, so uh, he did get very violent. He, he, he's, he broke things and he like throws a tantrum. And really? Do you love him? Yeah, I love him. You love your stepfather? Yeah. And you love your mother? Yeah. And so at what age did you realize you were overweight? At what age did you realize that you first I mean, realized, like, you know <laughs> what, I'm fat? When I realized I was overweight, um, oh man, I mean, I knew I was fat when I was a child, but I didn't really understand how bad it was when I was a child. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I can remember my childhood very clearly but I can also remember how I thought as a child, and I remember that how my brain worked as a, as a child compared to how my brain works now. Your brain as a child is very foggy, and, and it's, not very, right. it's not very clear compared to your cognitive abilities when you're older. Yes. So I, I realize, and it's, so it's kind of funny when people say that children can make certain choices that adults can make, because it's not true, because children are very um, emotional, and they're very uh, innocent, and they're not cognitively. Right, because they're discovering, you know, yeah. they're just learning as they so, go. So I still, I like, I knew I was fat as a child, but at I, what age? I must have been like, I guess I was fat really young, so it must have been maybe like five or six. So around five or six, you thought I'm a fat. Uh, or I, I child. guess, I guess, I guess, like, I didn't think I was fat necessarily, but like when I was six, I think the doctor told me, or like told my mom that I was obese or something like that. Oh, okay. And then <clears throat> when I be, when I, uh, I think at the time. After I turned six, um, I, I, rode a lot, I rode around a lot, a lot on a bike, and I did lose weight as a child, because right. I, was, I was only a little chubby back then. Right. Um, and I did lose weight when I was seven years old, but for whatever reason, what happened after seven years old, I think, oh, funny enough, I guess seven years old is when 
my stepfather came around. <laughs> oh, that's a weird coincidence, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's amazing, huh? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Now to do it. So I guess when I was seven, my stepfather came around, and I guess there was some conflicts between us even back then. Yeah. Um, but he was he was nicer to me back then than he than than he was when I was like older. He's he's nicer to me now, but there was like a point in time where there was just like a big conflict between us. And so you 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 grew up realizing you were fat. Did you feel unhappy with yourself? Once you realized you were fat? I, be, I became more upset about myself and more like, um, you know, uh, I guess ashamed and sad and, and like, you know, uh, something was wrong. Mostly when I was like, after I graduated high school. Oh, really? And the reason for that is because in, in school and in middle school and uh, in, in like, uh, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, you know, all those, all those grades, uh, like they, there was like kids who were mean, right? Like they, they would call me fat or whatever, and you know, uh, but it wasn't like kids were still nicer. I mean, people were, I mean, people were more innocent when they're right. around that age. So I, it was easier to talk to girls my age when I was around that age, and right. especially like during uh, middle school and and high school, right. because um, they were more, you know, they were more innocent. And when someone is more innocent, they're generally, you know, more kinder and receptive, right. and, and things of that nature. And so, like that's that's actually one of the main problems with with incels and in like location cells, right? Um, or like incels in general is that when women get not innocent anymore, like when they when they sleep around with a lot of men, uh, they're not very nice or receptive anymore. They right. they have they develop a lot of problems, and there's there's like a lot of various reasons for that. But like um, so the so when I grew up um, and I became 18. And suddenly, I was thrown into a world where there wasn't any innocent people, especially in L.A. There's no one who's innocent in L.A. Right, know? that's uh, right. Uh, I realized that, you know, the world is a lot darker and grimmer and harder than, than, than I thought it was yes. when I was a child. At, at first, I was, like, really desperate. Like, be, like, I was really desperate to find a girlfriend, and I would do all I could to... Uh, try and do that and what I would do is I, I downloaded a bunch of dating apps and I downloaded a bunch of different things and I would um, Well at first I wasn't extremely desperate. I was just like I was like oh, I, I, I'm 18 now I, I should be able to get a girlfriend relatively easily and um, I'm sure everything will be fine. I'll just download and you a were fat at the time. You're I was well, I was more fat than I was now. Okay yeah. I, at, at the peak of my uh, fatness. I was like 330 pounds. That's amazing. Yeah so wow. I mean, and so you're thinking now I'm 18, 19, I'm going to go for a girl. Yeah, like, I, like I'm, done with, I'm done with high school. Uh, I'll, I'll go look for a girlfriend. I'll look for a job. I'll, I'll try. Maybe I'll go to college. Yeah. Uh, all those different things. And so uh, I downloaded a lot of dating apps. Um, and because I was, I'm relatively good at speaking with people. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of people say, oh, you're just, like a lot of people tell incels that they're um, awkward and I mean a lot of them are awkward and they're a lot of them can't communicate very well right and you know that's just for various reasons like I can get into that like into a lot of detail later but I downloaded all these dating apps and, and, I, and I did go out and I, and I tried to talk to women and, and things of that nature and, and you know women were, were nice and receptive but none of them wanted to be in a relationship or date me and I was just like I'll just keep trying. You know, there's plenty of fish in the sea, right? You gotta <laughs> right. just keep trying. Yeah. So I kept trying and I kept trying for months and months and months and months and months and months and just kept trying for months. And then slowly that builds in your mind. You're like, why is no one saying yes to me? It's like, right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, uh, I wasn't like, I mean, yeah, I was fat, but I was still taking care of myself. You know, I, I, I was trimmed. I took a shower every day. Um, I was, I was, I was nice, you know, uh, all those things. Uh, I was, I was, I could talk decently well, but nothing ever seemed to work out. And I was like, uh, what's wrong? Am I, am I ugly? Like what's, what's happening here? And it just kept happening for months upon months. And so that made me very depressed yeah. and that made me very, uh, angry. I was like, what's wrong? What is going on here? And eventually that did lead me down a path of, of finding a website called uh, 4chan, oh, yeah. right? And yeah. on 4chan, there's a board, uh, an image board called R9K, which means Robot 9000. And I went on that image board, board and I found there were other, mostly young men, but uh, 
and they were talking about similar problems. They were like, oh, I can't find a girlfriend. You know, everything in my life seems, seems wrong. Some people were a lot more depressed than I was, and some people, and uh, there are a lot of people who have it a lot worse than I do, by yeah. the way. There's a lot right. of young boys who are suffering a lot, and they need help uh, a lot more than I do. I mean, I think I need help as well, but I think that they need a lot more help right. than I do. Uh, so I, I, I went down this rabbit hole, and I found a lot of uh, uh, what they would call like red pills about, uh, uh, about like women and, and the sexual market and things of that nature. And, and um, uh, I became very like dark and, and, and uh, hateful and resentful of women at the time. At the time, I was like 18. And I did, at the time, hate women, right? Mm -hmm. Like at the time, I did, I, I figured that all women were like this. Because yeah. in my experience, all yeah. women were yeah. like that. Yeah. But um, as so, I... So let me ask, did the women tell you, all these women you met online, you would meet them in person, right? I wouldn't meet all of them in person, but I would meet, uh, I would... Like, I wouldn't meet the ones online in person, but I would also go out oh. to just, you know, events or different, uh, right. um, the, like, social occasions, and I, would, and I would talk to women, and, you know, Would they ever out. tell you why they didn't want to date you? Um, sometimes they would just say, like, you know, you're not my type. I have, I have had some one, <laughs> one girl say, you know, I was too short. Actually, multiple girls tell me I was too short. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, nobody ever mentioned my weight, but in my, I, I kind of, like, knew... Yeah especially from uh from the internet that i was like it's kind of my weight isn't it <laughs> it's like it's like like it's probably a lot it's probably has to do with my weight as, as well so there's there actually it's funny i mentioned my weight again because there are going to be some people who are going to see this maybe like incels who might uh, uh recognize let's say my name on the forum later on right. which i might talk about um and they're going to be like oh he's a fake cell because uh, he's a fat cell, and and a fat, they say fat cells are fake cells because fat cells might have a good bone structure. Like I might have a good bone structure underneath my face, or like I might have a lot of loose skin, but after I reach my goal weight, which might be let's say a year from now, right. you know, from the constant working out and progressing, right. I'm, I'm probably going to be relatively skinny by hopefully even next uh, summer. Right. Um, uh, there's going to be people who are going to say, oh, by that time, he's not even going to be a location cell. He's going to be a vol cell in L.A. He's going to be a Chad Light or whatever, you know? So, uh, and, 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 and it's just like, but that's not necessarily, it's not like a fair thing to say because there are average, there are guys who are better looking than me who have problems in places like this. Right. There's, there's, there's uh, right. Who, who are incels as well. There are men who are taller than me who are incel in places like this or in other places around the world, like London, for example. There's a lot of incels in London. There's a lot of Asian incels in places like this as well. They're for various different reasons. Are uh, incels mostly white people? I would say that most white incels, guys? I would say that most incels are like white men, mostly young white men, but um, there are uh, quite a few Asians and Indians and uh, there are a few black incels, but they're not that common. Right. Um, and what age group do they normally range from what to what? I would say that like most incels are probably between the age of like 16 to 25. Oh, okay. Um, now there are obviously some who are older and right. there's some who maybe even they find out younger, but. And so at some point you decided I am an incel. Yeah. And so you decided I want women, I want to have sex, but I'm giving it up. I'm not going to even try it anymore. Well, no, that's, that's not what incel means. Incel means that you want it and you try to get it, but you can't get it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you're constantly, you, you, you go out there. And so that, that's what I was uh, alluding to when I was 18 and when I was getting desperate, is that eventually I got so desperate that I decided I'm going to have no standards at all. I'm just, I'm going to go for any, I'm going to go for old women, ugly women, women who, you know, they look like monsters. I'm going to, I'm going to go for them. And, uh, Amazing. Yeah. So have you ever had sex? No. You never had sex? No. Have you given up? No. You still trying? Uh, 
I mean, now that I'm, I'm, I, I have become a, a, a Christian, I, I, I'm, I'm trying, but I'm trying to find a woman who would marry me first, you know? Oh, okay. Because like, I, I, want, I want a relationship with a, with a woman who's also like a virgin and stable. There's a lot of insults right. who are like that as well, because yeah. there, there is a lot of uh, studies and, and um, just different data that show that um, women who have had no sexual, uh, you know, no sexual acts with another person, uh, they tend to be the most stable uh, in terms of a relationship partner. That makes like, sense. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's funny how Christianity, they tell you that don't, uh, you know, don't have sex before marriage because, you know, f it's bad, right? It's yeah. a sin. So, uh, and the science says the same exact thing. The science says if you have sex before marriage, with multiple different people, especially from men have problems as well, but, but women experience more problems from having premarital sex yes. than men. Um, they develop a lot of mental issues yeah. and, they, and they, they aren't really um, good relationship partners and they don't make very good decisions in choosing their partners right. either because of these um, situations. So how did you feel when you were turned out by old women, ugly women, <laughs> and, and all that? Like what did that, that feel like? That made me really depressed. I was, <laughs> I was like, I was shocked. I was like, at a, at a point, I was like, surely, okay, maybe women my age don't want me, but I'm sure like maybe the ugly women will want me, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe the, the old women will want me. You know, all these, so I'm like, oh, I just, I just want, I just want someone to like me, but. And what would they say, the old and ugly, what would they say? Um, well, they, um, they would just turn me down, I guess, you really? know, they would just turn me down. Uh, and so how do you feel about yourself right now? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm confident in, um, the future for myself. Okay. Like I, I am, I am confident that, uh, with how I, my facial structure and, 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 you know, everything that if I get skinny and I get healthy and hopefully if I get a job and, and all those different things that I can uh, and if I'm hopefully moved to a better area as well because <laughs> this place is you know hopeless <laughs> LA is hopeless but but I, I am confident in like going to a better area right. and uh, um, being healthy and, and good looking and, 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 and hopefully have a stable job and, and oh, finding yeah. a nice woman yeah tell me about the most common type of incels I would say that most incels are location cell, whether they realize it or not. Oh, okay. And the reason for this is you, when you see a lot of incels talking about their problems, and what you will see is when you ask them or where they say where they're from, almost always they're usually from a uh, leftist, hypergamous, high population city or urban area. And they're usually from a place like uh, LA, London, Auckland, New Zealand, some places in Australia, some places like New York. Uh, LA is the worst one though. In, in America, LA is the, like, I've done a lot of research into the data. Right. And LA is the worst place to be as a young white or Asian male to find a uh, partner, basically. Right. It's very, very, very hard for, uh, it's actually very hard for men in general to find a partner in a place like this. Right. But, um, there are like when like as i was talking about earlier i did when i became very bleak and i hated all women right i did eventually learn especially through meeting a lot of women who were from out of state and from other uh, countries and from other places that in like let's say middle america more conservative or or, or, right. or traditional areas where women are, are taught to um you know, care about themselves and care about being a mother and care about being having a family and things of that nature. They tend to be a lot more receptive. They tend to be a lot more mentally aware. They can even help hold a conversation a lot easier than than <laughs> people here. I think that it, how I look wouldn't affect me in middle America. Right. I think I, I think I would. I think a woman would be able to see past my my looks a lot more right. likely, and she would be able to see that oh, this is a young guy who you know, um, he's decent personality wise. He, he wants to have a job, he's stable, whatever, or, or you know, right. things of that You're nature. Right about that. What's another type of incel? Okay, yeah, this, that's a great question. There are a lot of different types of incels, but the, the main three, there's like three that I would say are the main three. There's um, location cell, there is mental cell, 
and then there is uh, what I would call, I'm not really sure if this is the accurate term, <laughs> but I would call it like abomination cell. <laughs> and, and so uh, a mental cell is someone who is an incel generally because of a mental condition that they have. Oh, I see. Usually it could be like, it could be autism, it could be um, Asperger's, it could be a, a, a mental condition that they developed because of abuse, it could be uh, different, various different types of mental conditions. Um, what I would call an abomination cell is someone who is physically deformed, oh. right? And, and they, or who is ugly, like really ugly. And uh, <laughs> they might not be able to get a girlfriend, even in a more traditional area, because they are actually physically right, deformed, right? right. They, they have, and you know, that's very sad, and, and, but I would not say that the majority of incels are abomination cells. I would say that most, even whether they realize it or not, are location cell, just from my own, um, examining of the data. So like the community, for lack of a better word, are they like in touch with each other from around the world by the way of the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the term incel got popularized, as I was talking about, there was the, 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 the image board on 4chan called R9K. And that's where a lot of young men would go, I think, first. Mm. Is that's when people started to realize that they didn't, they didn't call it incel, but they would call themselves, or they would call themselves robots. Um, so I guess it was a little bit more broad than incel oh, okay. at the time. So there's no incel convention or anything? No, there's no convention. And there's, the, the reason for that as well is because um, a lot of incels are, are very awkward and they're very sad and they're very lonely. Oh, I see. Um, so, and also a lot of them are very paranoid, especially from the constant attack that they've received a lot uh, lately in the media, like CNN or, or Vice, uh, HBO, Comedy Central, lots of YouTubers have attacked them. In so, what way? So there's a lot of uh, uh, what I would call like, I guess, hit pieces on incels. And it, they like to portray these, they like to attack these young men and they call them uh, sexist, Misogynist. Some of them are sexist, right? But not all of them. Right. Uh, some of them, and, and by the way, let me, let me actually clarify that a little bit. The ones who are sexist, there's a reason why they're sexist. It may not be right that they're sexist, but the reason why they are hateful of women, let's say, and I, that's, that's what I'm using as a definition of sexist. I wouldn't really, but the reason why they're hateful of women is because they've experienced yeah. bad women in their life. Yeah. If they live, if they experienced a good life, they wouldn't right. be hateful of women at all. Um, but so one of the main reasons why the media attacks uh, incels, I would say, is mostly because they're young white men for the most part. Yeah. Also, a lot of them are right wing. So is this because a white man are under attack that a lot of young white men are becoming incels? I would, yes, definitely. Yeah. Do you feel attacked as a young white man? Well, not, not physically attacked, right, but like socially mean... attacked. I mean, and, and like, uh, like status wise, I don't feel like I can succeed in, in LA. Like, I don't feel like I can get a job here. I don't feel like because I can. Because you're white? Yeah, or especially amazing. because I'm a young white man. And what does that feel like? What is that like knowing? Because you're right about it. It's not just a feeling. It is a reality. And so what is it like growing up as a young white male knowing that you're being intentionally discriminated against because of your color. I mean, it's, it's terrible, right? It's, it's, it's awful. Like, uh, um, it pushes you into uh, like extreme mindsets. You know, it pushes you into these uh, views that you may not have had otherwise if you weren't attacked. Like, for example, as I was kind of alluding to, you know how like a lot of them, as I mentioned, a lot of incels are more right wing. Yes. There's a lot of them who are extreme as well. Like a lot of them who are more fascist or national socialist. And I know national socialism sounds, because it has a socialism word in it, right. so people think it's socialism. I can actually elaborate on that a little bit. I'm, I wouldn't say that I am, I wouldn't associate with that necessarily, <laughs> but I, 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 I want to try and um, defend and like portray them in, and I want to try and represent the people who do believe that who are incels in a, in a fair light. All right. Um, like I remember, I watched a previous interview uh, with you where you were interviewing Dinesh D'Souza. Yes. Right? And he talked about how um, National Socialism was uh, socialist. So thus it was evil and, and bad. Because socialism is evil and, and wrong and leftist and all that. But however, uh, 
as, I, as I'm saying again, I, I'm not necessarily associating with it. I'm just, I'm just trying to no, represent uh, national socialism from what I know, from what uh, I've researched into what they believe, what the, what the incels who might necessarily be fascist or national socialists, they believe, uh, and, and by the way, national socialism itself, it is not socialist. It has the word socialism right, in it, but it's, but not, it's socialist. not socialist. Okay. It's kind of like, you know how like a, a kidney bean is not the same thing as a jelly bean? Right. But, but they're it's both beans. Bean. Yeah. It's, it's just like the name, right? Yeah. Uh, national socialism is actually more capitalistic than you might think. Like it's very, it's very uh, 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 traditionalist and, and, and so, and corporatist, and not really corporatist, that's bad, that's a very bad thing. It's, it's capitalistic and uh, traditional. Oh, okay. It does have some social programs in it, but they're not. Uh, the, the main problem with socialism, especially with a lot of what incels would, would, would attack with socialism and with leftism, is and why they would even say that, that um, this isn't just, this is, this is like most incels in general, I would say, who are aware of their inceldom. Um, they would say that um, it's because of Marxism and because of uh, socialism and because of these leftist forces that have happened over the past several decades that have led up to this moment where white men are being under attack and women are being encouraged to not be women anymore right. and th things have rev like reverted. So what, what you find is there are some incels who they see Marxist attacks, they see socialism, they see it in the universities, they see themselves yeah. being attacked, yeah. they see it in the media, they see it in they see it in video games, they see it in comic books, they see it in books, they see it everywhere. Yeah. And what they so of what will happen is when they see all these things, they will find something that is a hundred percent the opposite. And that's what national socialism is to a lot of incels. They will see national socialism, which builds itself up as a ideology that is one hundred percent anti Marxist. It, so it, it amazing, man. yeah. So, uh, now there are some, obviously there are some extremely bad connotations with national socialism, for example, like Hitler or, or the Holocaust or, or things like that, right? Um, the thing is, most incels who are national socialists, I, I know this is, I'm not gonna uh, like <laughs> argue about this, uh, but uh, they don't believe the Holocaust happened, right? Like they, they think it was a, a lie or, or not necessarily that it was a lie that, I think, I think their explanation is that um, during the war, during the end of the uh, German war, there were about um, 300,000 Jews that died in internment camps from starvation and typhus, uh -huh. and that was from Allied bombing uh, that bombed German supply lines, and that's what killed a lot of Germans and Jews in general because they were starving and dying of disease. That's what they believe, right? right? And, that, and so, right. so even if, like, let's say hypothetically that. Hitler was a bad guy and, and he killed millions of people who were innocent. They don't believe that. So, so even, if, even if it's true, they don't believe that. Is that because of the attack upon them for being white? Yeah, I would say definitely. The reason, the yeah. reason why mostly young white men are, are going to these, especially incels, are going to these extreme ideologies such as national socialism. And I say extreme, I mean, because they are extreme, but they, they're actually very old and, and, and traditional right. in a lot of senses, right? So, As a young white male, do you feel blame for the failure of colored people? Like all the blame is being put on you, a young man like you, you had nothing to do with it, you don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah. Do you feel that kind of pressure? I wouldn't say necessarily on me specifically, but I would say that as my group, as, as, a, as young white people, mm -hmm. I would say that yeah, we are blamed a lot, and, and I think a lot of you know, young men are retaliating in different ways because they feel blamed. I want to explain a few popular terms among incels. Uh, number one, what is Stacy? Right, uh, so a Stacy is um, like an extremely attractive woman. Like, like the, the top, like the most attractive woman you can think of, that's, that's, that's a Stacy. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, and the reason why that term exists is because um, it's basically to explain how, like you know, extremely attractive women can succeed a lot more than than anyone. But it's not it's not just extremely attractive women. They believe that women in general can succeed more than, than oh, okay. men in general.
And another term is a chad. Yeah. What's a chad? Now, a chad is like the, the male equivalent of a Stacy, right? A, ch oh. a chad is like the 6'4", he's like extremely buff, he has a chiseled, beautiful <laughs> face. He's, uh, he's like, he's, you know, Amazing. He's the Ubermensch, you know. He's 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 like the uh, the Greek god. He's 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 the genetically superior male who is uh, in in alpha male and all those things. Do the incels people hate those kind of people? Uh, there are definitely a lot who are, I guess, let's say, resentful of them, uh -huh. right? And and but there are. I would say that they're more resentful of women, which they probably shouldn't be. Um, well, that's because they've been rejected by women. Yeah, and um, but there is a hatred towards, um, I guess, what you would call slut makers. Remember, you know, you know what a slut maker is, I obviously. Do. Are but, you a uh, you want to be a slap maker? No, 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 no. <laughs> are there incels who are slap ma in incels who are slap makers? There are incels. Well, I guess you could call. I mean, who would want to become slap makers? I would say that yeah, there are probably some <laughs> who might want to become slap yeah. makers. Um, but and I would say there might even be a few who kind of are, and I'll explain why. Okay. Um, there is a concept in the incel community that you can't. You can still be an incel if you hire a prostitute or an <laughs> escort or right. something of that nature because it doesn't count if she doesn't want to be with you. Right. Right? Or if she doesn't want, if she, like, the only way you can reverse inceldom or whatever is if a woman willingly wants to be with be you. Be with you, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, without paying for it or without manipulation or, you know, well, you know right. what I mean. Yeah. So. I would say that the the ones who are what they would call escort selling, which means that they are, they're like buying escorts and stuff like that. They are probably doing actually more harm to other incels because they are promoting um, more uh, degeneracy and like let's say slutty oh, I culture. Yeah. So, so like they're 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 promoting the things that might have caused incels to be incels in the first place because in a more traditional. Uh, world where women were women, those prostitutes may not have even been prostitutes, yeah, right? They could right. have been uh, great mothers. There, uh, uh, so I just want to have this on record. You finished high school, right? Yes. But you didn't go to college. No. And why not? It's not a sin not to. You're smarter for not going. Yeah, I, but, I know. But yeah. why didn't you go? Um, it was for various reasons. I did hear from a lot of people uh, who I trusted to be intelligent. They told me that college was a waste of time, and they told me that it is full of a lot of uh, propaganda, a lot of right. a lot of uh, a lot of things. Th and like so, when you go th when you go through this process, even in recently, even in STEM fields, even there get like which is you know like science, right. uh, um, engineering, things of that nature, math mathematics. Um, even those fields lately have become even more infiltrated than they were, let's say, even yeah. like five years ago. You're right. Um, it's hard, like, so when, like, let's say I went to college and, or university, and I succeeded in that, and I actually, like, I finished the whole thing, and I got my degree in, let's say, programming. I, I became a programmer, and, and, I, and I do actually study some programming on my own, but you don't have to go to college to be, be a programmer, right. you can just learn... But the sad thing is that they do expect you to have a degree in a lot of places. So um, uh, I go through all the work to get the degree. And then I uh, try and get hired at a job. Uh, there's a high possibility, even if, let's say, I'm the greatest programmer out of my school or out of my right. class. Yeah. Uh, not the greatest programmer in the world, obviously. I'm sure if I was the greatest programmer in the world, I'd be doing a lot more than just getting hired by some random And company. you would be an incel. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so let's say I were to get hired at, or let's say I wanted to get hired at like Google or something. Right. It's very unlikely that I would get hired at Google. And why? Because they tend to hire people who are not young white men. Oh, you know, yeah. they try and hire people who are, yeah. uh, for diversity reasons, they try and hire people who are women or um, 
uh, Indian or, yeah. or, or unfortunately. Yeah. So, do you, are your parents aware that you are an incel? Um, to a degree, my mom definitely is more so than my father. But I have told my more my stepfather. I've told him, but I call him my father. Right. Uh, uh, he's also aware, but he isn't like completely aware because I think he was more drawn in by like he's he's the guy who watches all the the mainstream right. leftist type stuff. So he actually came to me because where he because he. I don't know if it was Bill Maher who was talking about it, but someone was talking about incels and portraying them negatively, as they do. He came to me talking about it. He's like, have you heard about these incels? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have heard about the incels. I actually, uh, actually kind of am one, you know? <laughs> and, you know, he was kind of shocked at, by that. And I was like, and, and I was trying to explain that, you know, they're not yeah. sex, these, they're not these sexist, uh, misogynistic uh, people who are like all full of hate. I mean, there's a lot of them who are full of hate, and it justify. I would say right. that. I would say it's justifiable. It's not justifiable to feel hate, but it's justifiable why they why feel they hate. Why they do it? Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask. So are most parents aware that their their sons are incels? No. Most I, of them are not aware. I would say that uh, most people who I would say like most people who are incels who live with their parents yeah. probably don't tell their parents for safety reasons maybe not maybe you know they might think that their parents would would think that they're uh, they might need like some sort of like psychological uh -huh. or or therapy because a lot of them are depressed there's a lot of them who've killed themselves as well there's also a term called black pill oh black pill right what's yeah. black pill so you know about red pill Right. right, right. Red pill is basically like the truth, right? And blue pill is the lies. Uh, so a black <laughs> pill is like a dark truth, a truth that is, it's true, but it's not very, it's not a very good truth. It makes you feel bad. It's very dark and bleak and it's, it's, um, it's not very hopeful. And like the opposite of a black pill would be like a white pill, right? But um, a, a black pill, like for, let me give you an example of what a black right. pill would be to, yeah. to someone, let's say, especially an incel. An incel might learn that um, because of their height, they can't get a girlfriend in, in where they live for whatever reason. Right. Because maybe like women in their specific area are more focused on height than, than anything else. You know, it varies depending on where you live, obviously. but. You know, like they might be face or might be a combination of face and height. You know, it, it's, it's very varied. Uh, so they might find a black pill that says, oh, their height is terrible. And because they're a manlet or whatever, yeah. they, uh, they can't get a girlfriend. So they become uh, very sad and dark and bleak about it. So that would be like a black oh, pill. Okay. It would be like a truth that is dark, you know? I got you. I got to ask you this. In April of this year, there was an attack committed by an incel that received, you know, a lot of press. Yeah. And um, it was, can you tell us, what was that guy's name? Alex? I think it was like Alec Minnison. Yes, Minnison. Tell us, he was 25 years old. Tell us about that. Well, Alec Minnison, there actually isn't as much information as you think there would be on him. But what there is... This happened in Canada, right? I think so. Yeah, in Toronto, Canada. I was a 25-year-old, and um, he drove a van down the sidewalk, killing 10 and injuring 16. Right. And he was an incel, who we were told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the thing about, like, the funny thing about his story is that there's oddly not that much information about it. Right. Like, the, only, like, the biggest thing, reason why we think he's an incel is because he made a Facebook post that said, like, um, like something about the beta uprising and hail inseldom or something like that or like hail Elliot, Elliot, uh, hail Elliot Roger the supreme gentleman and things of that nature and then uh, he you know committed the terrorist attack which and tell us about Elliot Roger okay now Elliot Roger I know a lot about Elliot and Roger. he was out of Santa Barbara right yeah, he's Santa Barbara that's, California that's correct yeah but, and, and he's this big hero now to all of the incels right? <laughs> well not all no I mean <laughs> part of it's a joke a lot of it is a joke there is like this sort of joke where people talk about how Elliot Roger is the supreme gentleman yeah. because he called himself he called the supreme himself gentleman. That. Yeah. So tell the folks who he was and so Elliot Roger was a um, young Hapa 
and Hapa means half Asian, half white. Oh, okay. Uh, his father was white and his mother was Asian. I believe she was Southeast Asian to be exact. And um, he was an incel, I would definitely say because of where he lived. And also probably because of, because he was a Hapa as well. Um, because there's a lot of, uh, I would say that this is very common in, in Asian men. I would say that Asian men who are in more multiracial communities, especially white or, or black neighborhoods, which, which isn't, isn't common, obviously. Like most Asians stick in their own community and, right. they, and they stick together. But it's very, it's, it's occasionally um, something that happens where you will see Asians or Indians or people of that nature who live in more white or, um, you know, areas like that. And I would say that they actually suffer the most even more so than whites because, uh, just, just from inceldom specifically, not, not, not necessarily they're attacked. Right. They, just, they, they are more likely to be an incel because women do not find them very attractive. And this is for various different reasons. Even their own women don't find them very attractive in those areas. And I would say it's mostly because uh, Asian men have more neonatal features. And neonatal features is basically like more um, androgynous, baby-like, feminine features. Um, now, it's not necessarily that they, they, they have like an overflow of estrogen or anything like that. It's, right. just, that, it's just how they naturally look, right? That's how right. Asian people are more uh, neonatal in how they look. So women tend to not be attracted to those facial features in general, especially white women. White women are not attracted to those features on oh, average. Okay. Um, so he could not, he was mostly surrounded by white women. And as you'd expect, and in that area, it's very similar to LA in the sense, you know, it's very yeah. hypergamous. Especially up there in Santa Barbara. Yeah, Santa Bar especially in Santa Barbara, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so just for the record, uh, this has happened in 20, 2014, 22-year-old Ellett Roger killed six people and injured 14 near University of, of uh, California, Santa Barbara. Before his killing spree, Elliot uploaded a long video explaining how angry he was at women for rejecting him. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. I've never even kissed a girl. I've been through college for two and a half years, more than that actually, and I'm still a virgin. It has been very torturous. But in those years, I've had to rot in loneliness. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me. But I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime. Because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men, instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And did, were you, were, were the incel community aware of Elliot prior to him killing the people? Nobody was aware of him. There wasn't really many incel forums at the time. I don't think Incel was even a popular term at the time, right. but um, he was on a bodybuilding forum where he would complain about some things, and obviously YouTube as well. And um, after he did his attack on, you know, the people he did the attack on, um, people found his videos, as they do after someone yeah. does something like that, and people found him very funny and awkward and, and entertaining, I suppose. So people, uh, like, were intrigued by him. He was a very intriguing character. Right. You know, he was very like just intriguing to to um, to just like listen. Like, what? Like wh this guy is so weird. I mean, I mean, he, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's so he's so unique. Uh, and he wasn't a bad looking guy either. I mean, he wasn't like the worst looking guy in the world. I mean, there's people who are really right. ugly. He no, was, he wasn't a bad looking guy. Um, but if you look into his situation, it, it just it's very sad. But uh, because I, I, like. I'm not going to justify necessarily him killing people, but I can justify why he did that. Right. And the reason why he did that was because, like, let's say he lived in a, in a community where he was mostly surrounded by 
uh, Asians, right? Because right? most people who are mixed, who are like white plus Asian, they tend to look Asian. Asian features right. tend to, to come out more in mixed uh, children. Um, if he lived around other Asians and, and, and it was a more traditional Asian uh, community, I'm sure, he, or he just left where he lived, if he drove off into a better area, I'm sure he could have found um, a nice woman eventually. Yeah. But the thing is, the problem with that is a lot of young men, they experience that darkness and that and that hatred towards them and th and that that rejection for so long, and that just constant hate and, and barrage and attacks, and they some of them burst out in violence. It's very uncommon. Obviously, there's only two, right? Right. There's only, it's like, compare that to, like, let's say, um, Muslim attacks. There's, there's how many Muslim attacks? Uh, right. or, or what about, uh, it's funny how people, people talk about it's, it being incels, but it's not like a, an entire, like, it's a type of person. It's like, for example, um, someone who is having sex with women as, has the, as he wants to, like, let's say a slut maker, I'm sure there's been slut makers who have killed people, right? right. Of course, right? That's right? And there's people who who were voluntary celibate yeah. who I'm sure have killed people as well, yeah. a lot more. But, and he didn't even do it uh, talking about an incel movement. He did it talking about his own incel dumb yeah. personally, yeah. right? Yeah. He talked about his own virginity and, yeah. and how women hated, or not, not how women hated him, but how women did not want to have sex with him and how he couldn't get a girlfriend. And that's what led him to commit those actions. Also, uh, if you read into his story even more so, what you will find is that his mother um, wasn't necessarily the most fond of Asian men. And what you'll find this a lot in, in HAPA uh, couples, right. I mean, or, or like HAPA parents, is you know, like ha uh, the, the, it's usually a white man who marries an Asian woman, right? right. And uh, the, the, if they produce a Asian boy, sometimes they turn out just fine, obviously. Like there's, there's some good parents out there, there's some good Asian and, and white mothers, I mean Asian and white uh, right. fathers who, uh, uh, they, they it, it works out just fine. But what you will find is that in some cases, the Asian mother has sort of a internal hatred, not necessarily hatred, but a like dislike for Asian men, and that's why she chose to be the with white, a white yeah. man in the first place. Amazing. So, and and the sons, sons are, uh, you know, men in general are very perceptive of these things. Yes. And so when they see that their own mother, her the Asian mother, which is supposed to be their representation of what, what uh, a good right. woman is, they see that and they see that their own mother does not like Asian men. And they look Asian themselves because they're half Asian. Right. They develop this internal hatred and they, you know, it comes out in different ways. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. So, in short, what is this uh, solution for incels? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, um, there are a lot of different uh, solutions that people have come up with. I can, well, I guess I'll name the popular ones that people yeah. come up with. Um, you talked to Jordan Peterson? I have. You have, yeah. Yes. He's talked about, like, I don't agree with everything. He's, in fact, I think that some things he says are kind of like blue-pilled or whatever. Yeah. But um, he overall, he is a, a, a intelligent man. Yes. Overall, he's a very moral man, I would say, as well. He talked about a concept that was called enforced monogamy. And enforced monogamy is basically a concept of, as it sounds, enforcing monogamy. Right. And I, I'll get into, like, a big detail about why this is important. Uh, uh, culturally speaking, um, so evolutionary, like from like human evolution, thousands of years ago, uh, we used to be more like savage, right? Like e even like 
even in, in the Bible, right? Like, like let's say you're a Christian, you're not, you don't necessarily believe in like super far away cavemen. Right. Um, when people were more savage, there was different sexual standards back then, right? There was different, like, it was very common for there to be an alpha Chad type male yeah. who was, uh, who he was taller, he was stronger, he was more physically able. And this man is the man who would uh, take all the women and he wouldn't let the weaker men breed with the, the right. women. He would take all the women and he would breed with the women. Now, what happened in these situations, sometimes he would let like a few men get the scraps or whatever, <laughs> you know? And uh, this was before like the, the evolution of, of culture and society and, and all these different things. So uh, what happens is those men who are n seeing all these women, not, uh, they don't, they're not allowed to have the women. They, they get very resentful. You know, they were, they were the incels of, of thousands of years ago. Yeah. They were the original, right? And they group up together and they decide, okay, we can't get the women on our own, right? Like they, <laughs> they can't get the women on like, on let's say through power or through violence right. as the Chad might be able to. Um, so they, they might group up to rebel against the Chad or the, uh, I'm calling him the Chad. Right. But you know, they, they will come co up to rebel against him and they will take the women and separate them among themselves. Now what happens is, there were these these alpha Chad type uh, leaders, who um, they became more perceptive and aware of this, and they realized that if they hog all the women to themselves, then their own men will turn up against them, and then yeah. that causes a lot of violence and strife and problems. So what happens is, as as uh, humans and civilizations and races and, and everyone just kept evolving over time. Um, we developed different sociological and cultural and societal uh, mechanisms to guarantee stability and guarantee a variety of different um, ways that men, every man, would be able to get married. Or pretty much every, or, uh, men and women would be getting married and having children on an equal level. Yeah. So back in those days, in, in, the, in, in like the, the more primitive times, it was usually only about... 20% of men were having the children with 80% of the women and the other 20% of the women were like dying or, or you know, things of that nature. Um, so as culture and, and uh, society and all those things progressed over time and as like monogamy and, and religion and Christianity especially and all these different things that just uh, encouraged monogamy and stability grew over time to help progress the cultural evolution of society. Um, the margin of men who were having children with women slowly equalized and there was 80% of men and women who were having children. Only 20% of both men and women at the time were not having children, like in, in, the, in the peak of cultural uh, evolution, which might have been like even like uh, 100 or 150 years ago. It's very recent. Uh, so what happened is in the last 100 or so years, um, all that cultural evolution, all that thousands of years of progress to become uh, civilized, all, you know, lots of, you know, the black community was becoming civilized, the, the white community was becoming civilized, everyone was becoming civilized. Certain things happened, like the, the Marxists, for example, they came to America and they destroyed thousands of years of cultural evolution. And that's what led to what we're experiencing today. We live in a primitive, sexual market, yeah. just like it existed thousands of years ago. Um, and what, is, what this is doing is this is, help, this is making men who were more, let's say intellectually and, and, and more intelligent, uh, who tend to not be the most, uh, they, don't, they don't tend to be chads, people who are intelligent don't tend to be these six, four, uh, three <laughs> god types. Yeah. They tend to be just like average looking guys or you know, even like awkward or like, you know, small frames necessarily. And so they're the ones who aren't breeding and we need those men to breed because the smart men who uh, need to breed, uh, who they're the ones who help progress technology forward, oh, right? Yeah. Now, the way that you can fix this is through enforced monogamy, just like it existed a hundred or so years ago. And you can do this through many, many different uh, methods. You have to bring back, let's say Christianity, right? Yeah. Christianity is a great way of, um, 
helping enforce monogamy. I agree. Um, another way would be to put in laws that, uh, like legal systems in place, that help encourage enforced monogamy. And like and some concepts would be like, make a punishment, for, I know this is gonna kinda maybe sound a little extreme, <laughs> but make a punishment for people who sleep outside of wedlock. Maybe not, maybe not like send them to jail necessarily, but give them like a massive fine or something like that. Or increase, and this is gonna sound very extreme to some people, <laughs> increase the age of consent yeah. to 25 except in cases of marriage. And what this will do is this will allow uh, people who are 25 and younger who are the, the future, right? They're the people who are gonna be growing up. This will force them that if they want to have sex without getting punished from having premarital sex or getting a divorce or you know, all the possible legal systems that might be in play t to uh, uh, discourage them from being promiscuous or not monogamous, this will force them that if they want to ha have sex and have uh, um, you know, things of that nature, they have to find someone that they love who they will get married to before the age of 25 or and they have to stay loyal and monogamous. They have to be a virgin, obviously, as well. Um, Amazing, man. Yeah. I could go on and on with you. <laughs> Believe me. So quick yes or no answer. Yeah. There are a group of, I've heard, I've just read a report, or maybe I heard it somewhere. There are young girls who have been told that having sex like men do with a bunch of different guys, just do your thing have gone out there and had sex and then later they realized that wasn't good for them. And so now they're depressed and they're hanging out in corners. Mm -hmm. I mean, like hiding away. You heard about that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's mostly common. Yes, that, okay. that's common in more like older women, right? Because they, they, they made a lot of mistakes when they were younger. Oh, then, okay. Yeah. Number two, um, I, um, are, are there female incels? No. No female incels. There's no homosexual incels either. No homosexual incels no, because, and no female. Because have you 100 seen? 100% male. Yeah. Have you seen homosexual men? They can find another man so easily. Like, yo, <laughs> if I was a homosexual, I could find a man who, I could find a Chad homosexual who wanted to be with me. So, yeah. It's really easy when you're homosexual, but no, no. Oh, you okay. You have to be a straight male, yeah. So tell us how we can find you. All right, yeah, you can find me at, uh, my email is brendiocontact at gmail.com. I have a YouTube channel where hopefully I'm gonna be making more uh, uh, YouTube videos where I'm gonna be explaining a lot of things. You can basically, <laughs> if you wanna find me anywhere, whether it be Steam, YouTube, uh, any of those places, look for Brendio EE. -E. Is this your first interview about this? Yes. Absolutely amazing. Thanks, man. You really, really are, yeah. really are. And so my final question, did you have fun? I had fun. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming. And thank you for tuning in, folks. Amazing. Support Patreon. Support the products we have. This is what we do at the moment. I do pray for the day you see straight. There's a lost child inside who only needs faith. Make a mixture of the perfect elixir. You claim it spreads peace, but it only breeds hate. Keep pace with the delusional left. No matter the truth, it's collusion in the breath. Real men gotta come back from the fallen state and bring back our morals in a forceful way. It's not empowerment to fornicate Cause not one thought is spent to afford your fate You now equate regret with a forceful rape While you parade around in nothing but some shorts and tape Like you want to attract the worst society has All I see is someone in defiance of the dad It doesn't make me mad, just a shame to be called A broke, alone woman finishing the slut walk <laughs> And I stay right, and I keep hope But it's on my mind, cause it's all I know I'm riding the thick of it and wouldn't change nothing out a little bit I pray for the day that the world's gonna change Remember my name and pick yourself up off the ground Next time on The Fallen State Do you agree with me that straight, white, conservative Christian men of power are under attack? Absolutely, yeah. Give us an example of the proof of it. In South Africa now, you have a leader of a political party. He's calling for the killing of white people. And Huffington Post and Vox, they're saying, if you talk about it, you're a white supremacist. And then they're like, well, the truth doesn't even matter. So it's like, they want white people to get murdered. The American media, the left-wing media, are accomplices. Not only not covering it, but they're censoring and trying to shut up people who are. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here.
Subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show.